to another episode of Walker Adventure Media. On today's episode, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna be giving a long-term review of our Thule Tapui rooftop tent. We've been using this tent for quite some time now. You can see it just right here in the background. We've been using it for a couple months, probably camped in a, a little over a dozen nights, something like that. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed this tent. I, I'm gonna be going in depth into what this tent features, as well as some of the pros and cons and whether or not you should get a rooftop tent as well. I, do, I don't think that they're for everybody. And so I'll just kind of dive in a little bit more into kind of my thoughts on our rooftop tent. On the back here of Ned, we've got our Tuli Tapui tent. Now this tent has been, it's been outside for the last six months or so. So far the cover here has held up really well. There are a few wear spots as we drive around, um, you know, bashing into trees and, and whatnot. I also have strapped a few pieces of metal to the roof here. Um, and so I accidentally did cut up the tarp. Uh, the covering however they're slight they're very small nicks the cover here is very durable I have no hesitations with you know keeping everything dry inside it's a it's a really solid covering to make sure everything on the inside stays dry and safe the way it should be setup and takedown has been really easy on this tent as well it, when we first got it it was a little bit challenging you'll see here in a second that we have a few um, they're pretty flexible bars that we use to keep the windows open um, they're not terribly hard to put in once you kind of know a few tricks um, but they aren't the easiest thing in the world to kind of learn i guess how to how to put them in and then especially take them out i'd say it's harder to take the po poles out than it is to put them in the tent usually goes up in about five to ten minutes the thing that i like most about it is that we're able to store our bedding inside so we just already have a couple of blankets um, ready to go anytime we want to come out and camp we just bring our pillows and we're ready to uh, we're all set we don't need to you know worry about if we got our sleeping bags or whatever we just keep them in here the tarp closes fine over the top of it so there's really no there's no issues with keeping our stuff inside. We're gonna do a quick time lapse and show you about how long it takes us to set this up. It's pretty simple and easy, um, but there are a few tips and tricks that I'll go over here in a second. up the tent looks pretty great I do like the gray and blue obviously I have a silver truck and so it matches pretty well when we come over here to the entryway you've got a nice canopy I have used this tent while it was raining and this canopy was pretty nice it kept me dry um, and it's just a nice way to get in and out of the tent without being immediately you know doused by the rain <laughs> the ladder here is is a good ladder I would say it can be a little difficult measuring out each of these rungs for the very last portion and you'll notice here as well that there still is a little bit of play um, just right here on the edge as far as I know this is totally normal I've never had any issues with it but just something to be aware of coming up inside the tent I just left the mesh here open um, but this is the view inside the tent the backside is closed there. This that's how the tent comes. It's just all everything's all closed up. You also have a few um, bungee cables up here to make sure everything folds in the way it should. Like I said before, we just store all of our gear inside. I haven't touched a thing in here. We have a about two and a half inch memory foam mattress um, that we just put a sheet on over the top, and then I found that this mattress needed a little bit more squish and so we put just a crocheted blanket on top of that um, and that's just kind of enough squish for what we needed after that we just have another quilt um, you know just in case we get a little chilly um, and then we just keep our sleeping bags and blanket in here we've ne I've never been cold in this tent we did a couple nights down in Moab when it was around 30 20 to 30 degrees at night and we weren't even cold at all um, there's big windows here on the side for the summer so it keeps it nice and cool and then you can even um, open these up in the ceiling as well we haven't opened those up yet we might today because it's a warmer day but I found just with this door open as well as the other side and then this window here there's plenty of ventilation that goes all the way through now something to keep in mind and this is kind of one of the cons that I find um, is when we come over here 
I almost never open up this window here because it faces the truck and it's really hard to get those poles in. Like this one's easy, but you'll notice the other one, the cabinet here is in the way. So it's really hard to get this whole flap open. So honestly, it's all tied up, locked up. I never open it, um, which is a little bit of a bummer when you're putting this tent on a truck, um, for instance. And then check this out as well. You only have about two inches in between your cab and the rooftop tent, especially on a smaller truck like this. This is a Nissan Frontier. And so there's not a lot of room in between the actual tent and your cab. Um, and so I have noticed it can be kind of a pain to pass the zipper from, you'll see that we've got a zipper right here. I just have it extended on a cord. It's kind of a pain to pass because as you can see, my arm only fits so far and there's not that much room. So it can be a bit of a hassle to pass that zipper back and forth. I do have a couple of tricks. Um, one of which is using the said poles here, um, the ones that come with the tent. For example, you'll have, two, you'll have an extra one. And so I always like using this pole here just as a hook to kind of hook that zipper and then pull it all the way through. And that seems to work pretty well. Another trick um, that I like to do as well, it's really simple and easy. When you're installing the poles into the tent itself, it can be a bit of a hassle to like wrestle around with it. So what I like to do is just, I hook the pole here on the end of the kind of the eyelet here. I pull it up, get it pretty well tight. I, I just find the hole where, where it needs to go in the, in the actual tent itself. And then I just pulled down with my right hand right here and then it locks into place. So this is secured, it's not going anywhere. And that I found is the easiest way to install these poles. Now to take them out, it's pretty similar concept. You just kind of pull down and then pull back out. Now they sometimes will bind here in the tent. Um, and so you just kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit um, and they free up pretty easy, just like that. All right, like I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to share a couple of the pros and cons that I found while using this tent. The first pro I would say is that it's really quick and easy. You know, you don't have to pack any bedding. You can just set it up in about five, 10 minutes. I will say this, if you're comparing, it depends on what type of tent you're coming from, um, if this tent will be faster or slower um, to what you're used to. I was coming from a really nice backpacking tent, um, like a North Face, or I think it's a Marmot, either way, really high quality tent that I can set up in about three minutes. You know, you're laying out a tarp and you throw up the poles, and it's ready to go. So this is slightly slower than that. However, if you're comparing this to maybe a more um, budget tent, like a Coleman or kind of like a Walmart style tent, this will be faster than that and easier to set up um, than one of those. That being said, it is really easy to set this up, but I, and I really think that you save a lot of time because you're not dealing with any of the bedding. The bedding just lives in it and you can just keep it in there. So there's pros and cons to each, right? And it does depend on what you're coming from, if it's this will be a better, a faster option or not. One of the other pros that I've found with this tent is that you're not on the ground. Now I'm no stranger to sleeping on ground tents. I've spent months um, quite literally on the ground sleeping in a tent. It's never bothered me in the past. However, it is really nice to be on top of the truck. For example, when you're in Moab or St. George, someplace where it's really sandy, or even just like where we're at right now, where there's not a lot of grass, you know, as you can see, there's, there's quite a bit of patches of dirt and so on. It's nice to be able to get up out of the dirt at the end of the day and be in a really clean kind of elevated uh, platform. That has been really sweet. Now, also, that is a pro, but it's also sometimes a con. I've been in a couple of storms in this thing, and it has, it's never failed me. It's very sturdy, well built. It's attached, it's secured to the rack just fine. However, because you're elevated, it does give the mind a little bit like, am I gonna blow away? You're not going to, but it, you know, begs the question um, while you're out here. Now on a couple of the cons um, for this particular tent, um, and one of the reasons that I may switch to a hard shell in the future, that being, with these, because there's so much fabric and it's more of a canvas based tent, when it's windy, everything just flaps in the wind. For my wife, it doesn't bother her very much. However, I'm very sensitive to, you know, flapping, rattling noises, right? It's not a lot, but there is a little bit. And so if it's a really, I've gone through a couple of thunderstorms in this tent, it's never leaked on me, which is awesome. Very waterproof, super dry. However, it can be slightly noisy. So again, it just kind of depends on what you're coming from. 
I'm coming from a really nice high-end backpacking tent where when you stake that thing down, there's no rattle, it doesn't ripple, it's dead silent. If you're coming from a little something more like a Coleman tent, then this will be quieter than a Coleman tent. So just kind of in that range, right? Not necessarily a con, but just something to keep in mind. One of the main cons, like I was mentioning before, just really is the space here in between the truck and the tent itself. So it's just kind of it's just kind of a hassle to open up sometimes, um, especially if you're in the cold, your fingers are kind of numb. It's not fun to play around with that zipper. However, it's not necessarily a con, obviously. You can just drive up and open up your tent, right? So pros and cons to each. One of the things that I'll be doing to solve this issue is by, um, I'll be installing this rooftop tent on a trailer. So we're gonna be, um, I'm building an overland trailer. You can check that out in the link in the description. It's a full overland trailer with a kitchen, a stove, everything. Um, and I'll be building, I'll be adding this tent on top of that trailer. I think that this will solve a lot of issues um, right from the get go. Just because you'll be able to walk all the way around the trailer, it's a little bit easier access, a little lower. Um, and I'm really excited when that uh, project is finished. So feel free to check that out and subscribe if you haven't already, uh, just so you don't miss anything in regards to that build. One of the other cons that I have found is that you do lose, you basically lose your truck bed. So for some people, this may be an issue. For others, it may not be. For me, however, as you can see, I now I have a pickup pad on the truck here, but I now had to get a rack because I want to take my bikes with me. Now, they do make racks that you could put a bike in the back of the truck here. Um, but however, this one is a lot shorter. And if you notice at the beginning of the video, before I set this whole thing up, the tent sit pretty flush with the cab, which I really like. Um, but that makes it really hard to put anything inside the back of the truck. So just another thing to kind of keep in mind, hence the Overland trailer is kind of a solution to that problem. So if you're asking yourself, should I get a rooftop tent? I think yes, for certain people, if you like doing a lot of multi-day trips where you're stopping every day and having a new campsite every day, this is definitely the way to go. A rooftop tent really makes a lot of sense. You keep all your bedding inside, um, you stop every day and you can, you know, you go to a new place and so you're packing this up every time. However, if you're one that likes to just stay and camp for a whole week in the same place and not move around very much, this is probably not your best friend. I think a ground tent would be a lot better. You stay on the ground, the you can leave camp and you still have your vehicle and you don't have to break camp every time you want to go, you know, go out to eat for dinner or whatever if you got hungry, right? So a couple of things to keep in mind. I do think this is a really good option, especially it's a very budget friendly tent. Um, if you're just kind of getting into it, they're a lot cheaper than some of the hard shells and so on. I haven't had any issues with weather or rain or snow. Um, and so it stayed very, very dry, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Give me your thoughts on how you feel about rooftop tents, if you like yours, or if you're looking at getting one, I can help hopefully help steer you in the right direction. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.